Shalom, who praises to Yahweh, Bashem El Shai, Bashem El Rakak with Dash. I will to to your apostles and elders a great millstone over well. And Shalom to the whole four lakh, this is the Paya Allah. The title of this video will be determined upon upload. Basically, what I want to go into is dealing with the current uh, climate that we're in, all right? And what current climate are we in, okay? There's various things going out right now with the whole um, weather balloon from China. Another, you know, weather balloon was shot down and more recently or something like that. And more recently now that they're, they're saying the UFO was shot down, all right? An unidentified flying object. Now, usually when they use that kind of language, I mean, you could say that the weather balloon, until they knew where it was, was a, was a UFO technically if you want to go with things to the letter but we know when they use that kind of terminology and language it's it's um it's it's um there's a word right there on the tip of my tongue so lucky it's um allotted to you know a chariot of israel all right which is the true identification you see, you know Esau says UFO we say IFO identified flying object and where is it identified in the scriptures all right in the bible it goes into various occasions and speaks of it being the chariots of, of Israel all right a vehicle for the angelic beings all right so the point being is that this is the recent news that's come out and uh there's a whole deception that's going out by Esau Edom, which is the earthly extension of Satan around the Heavenly Father's chief angel on the left hand side. Alright, and Esau basically is bringing on bringing about a bad time, you know, upon the earth. And that bad time is mainly, you know, perpetuated by deception. Alright, being uh, the polar opposite to that of righteousness being out of truth, all right? So with this man exercising that deception, this is, you know, let me even delve into that a bit. The, the, the deception is the idea that these chariots of Israel, all right, otherwise known as UFOs, as Esau calls them, or UAPs, all right, basically was shot down by Esau Edom. Now, with that being said, what's that? Why are they saying that? All right, it's meant to put those within the faith, or at least at, at, attempt to. All right, because you know none could the, the 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 elect, the very elect, can't be deceived. All right, but it's meant to shake the faith of those that are in in the word that are not in that number. All right, and only make them fall out. Okay, um, and also. It's for the sake of what? The masses of the people. Whether they be the children of Israel or just heathens within the world, all right? That they have more faith in the system, all right? Unbeknownst to them, because this will be a reference point for the future of events that will unfold with Project Blue Beam, all right? Things like that. And then ultimately, when the Lord makes his appearance on, upon the earth, all right? under the idea of the Star Wars program, as Ronald Reagan spoke of going back to 1984, I believe, 1986, that time that time period there. So these things are all being done to deceive the masses, to build and, and ultimately to feed into what? It's, it's things I mentioned is dealing with the image of the beast, the mindset, the, you know, that makes all the people come together and join as one. But ultimately, it also will make people want to take that, you know, that MOTB, all right? Because they'll see that Esau is a true means of salvation and they'll buy into the system even more because this man is just, you know, out of this world. He's able to do everything. So they'll buy more into his system, all right? But for us that are of the hopeful elect, Lord willing, we, we be of that number, all right? The elect of the nation of Israel, we ain't gonna fool, you know, fool of these these foolish devices that Esau's presented upon the earth. So I've got a couple of precepts I wanna go into 
and Lord willing you be edified. So this is the book of Second Corinthians ten uh, two and eleven. It says, Least Satan should get an advantage of us, alright? For we are not ignorant of his devices. Alright? Now Satan, what's one of Satan's main devices? Alright? True to the letter of his name, Shatan, alright, which means what adversary he is adverse to the truth, as I mentioned. So his whole thing is what his main device is that of lies and deception, right? Misleading people. And that's the main key ingredient that we're dealing with upon earth today, all right? Because remember, Esau was, has been loose for a season, okay? So him being loose for a season <laughs> means that he's doing as the Heavenly Father commanded him, deceiving the masses, all right? Only unto the time of the end. Okay? So I'll read it again. So this is the book of Second Corinthians two eleven. Lee Satan should get an advantage of us if we are not ignorant of Satan of his devices. Alright, we ain't ignorant of his devices. we we are fully aware of what's going on. Alright, and the reason why we're aware of everything that's going on is because we utilize these scriptures, the words of the Holy Bible, alright? And they basically quicken us. Alright, and allow us to see through all the lies. That's going on. So now I want to go into a historical event. All right. That shows you the key device of Satan. All right. And its outcome. So it's the book of Genesis 3 and 1. So it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord Yahweh uh, um, had made. And he said, Lord power Yahweh had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have the Most High said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. All right? It's what the serpent said unto Eve. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the most I have said, ye shall not eat of it, or the power I have said, ye should not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. The servant said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die, for the most I, for the power know, doth know, that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall become as gods, knowing good and evil. All right. Now this shows you something, you know, and the characteristics of Satan. All right, and the serpent. All right, Esau, is that what? He knows the truth. He's more than aware of the truth. All right, but in order for you to lie, you have to be privy to the truth. All right. So, with that being the case, him knowing the truth, basically, um, he he um, he uses it. He uses it to his own advantage. All right, to the point where what he can manipulate um, whoever he deems, all right, to fall to his will, all right, and basically, you know, fall short of the glory of the Most High Power, that is the truth, that's his purpose, all right, so everything he said was on point, all right, you do, will become a God, all right, but it doesn't omit what the Most High did, is the Most High a liar, hell no, he ain't, all right, so when he told, when he told Adam, and the we told the woman Eve, all right, however it went down, you know that they shouldn't eat it because they'll die. That was true, all right. But Satan just came in and said, "What would happen prior to that death, though?" He said, "You become like gods, knowing good and evil, but <laughs> you will die, all right." That whole actually becoming gods, that weren't something that would happen, you know, tomorrow. That's something that actually happened. You know, many millennium, 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 millennial, millennia later, all right? Thousands upon thousands, thousands of years later. 
and right it set a ball in motion yes but ultimately what the most i said stood true right and was more key than anything because it just showed disobedience in their part so anyway verse six and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat now this, is, this even gives you an insight to the mindset of a woman this is why when you deal with the women today most of them when they go to university when they go to study psychology all right they want to get into the psyche of the minds of people all right because why a woman's heart is snares and nets it's all about games mind games trying to get you know usurp authority have mastery in a situation all right but and remember mind you it says the most high empowered her not of wisdom that's why I even i don't even want to go down this road too much but you, you know you have women we deal with they're trying to one up with one up with you know one up you in some sort of sense of trying to suss you out find your weak points and then manipulate you accordingly and you know take advantage of you you know even last last night i found a sack a bit crazy with a it's individual i know and what that individual did is just like manipulation games to the to the zenith all right but it's because that's what they're about all right so you know i'm, I'm tap dancing around it because i really don't want to bring it up but it's just the point of where these women you know get off at they're, they're about games all right they're all about games that's a, that's a word has told you time and time again all right so reading on verse seven and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. All right. And they heard the voice of the Lord Jehovah walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord Power Yahweh amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord Power Yahweh called unto them, unto Adam, and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you, who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not to eat? See, now here the Lord, the Heavenly Father, shows you that what Satan said, he knew, all right? He, you know, he was right because he, as soon as he said, You're naked. So you ate of that tree, all right? I was aware. Because the only way you would know that is if you ate of that tree, all right? Because it, it fulfilled what Satan said. It would make you aware of good and evil, all right? Whereas they're only aware of what they were prior to that. Verse 12, And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. All right? So... You know, and it goes on to read out the judgment. Which. Uh, which I'll touch upon. And she, I'll just, um, you know, you, you know the judgment, you could read it. But basically, you know, the serpent was cursed accordingly, the woman was cursed accordingly, and Adam had a curse as well that he was given to, all right? Those judgments that we still live with to this day, ultimately being the main one, the one that's prominent above all is what? Death entering into the world, all right? Sin being known, okay? Because of that present this 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 um movie being made, that's what happened. Alright. And that's how great, you know, the fool of man was and the fact that we all die because of what deception of the devil. Alright. This is to really show the kind of the great level that those lies and those deceptions to what extent 
they can, you know, to what, um, to what power, to what, lucky, to what extent they have effect. All right. So let me close out with this. Book of First Corinthians 15 and 45. Okay, so it reads, And so it is written, The first man Adam was made a living soul. All right, as you go into the account in the book of Genesis, you know, it's given the spirit, you know, the body, the spirit was breathed into him, and he basically was a living soul. All right, and then it goes on to say, The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. All right, and that last Adam is Yahweh Shai, who, when you go into the book of Luke, the third chapter, it speaks of what um, Adam being the son of the Most High, and Yahweh Shai was also known as the son of the Most High. All right, but what, what's the difference between the two? That first Adam was the fall of man, but the second Adam being Yahweh Shai was what? The raising up of man onto a, you know, a extraterrestrial level as to where there will be no form of iniquity in them. All right? So, reading on, it says, How be it, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man was of the earth, earthy, and that's why his name was Adam. All right? The second man is the Lord from heaven. All right? Yahweh Shai. All right, who came down from heaven and then went back up in like manner. All right, showing you that one was what? A terrestrial man. Another was an extra, he wasn't a celestial being, but he was an extraterrestrial being, which means that he can move, maneuver between what? The terrestrial, the, the earthly plane, and what? The spiritual plane, the heavens. All right, because Adam, remember, only. Being an earthy man, what happened to him? He went into, he returned to the dust. All right, death was was introduced into the world, and he succumbed to it and died. All right, but it's just showing that what you know is the spirit that quickeneth the words that you know that the Lord spoke. They are life, and they are, you know they are, you know truth. So these are the things that are basically mean the most. The word. All right, the flesh is, uh, the spirit is winning, but the flesh is weak. So these are the things you know you have to mortify your members, and you have to have the mindset and approach to, you know, sticking to the word, adhering to the things that are written inside these scriptures, and using them to filter through every filter everything that's going on upon the earth, to basically escape the wiles of the devil. So with that, man, I pray you edify the next one. I say shalom, shalom.